Welcome to Lunch with the Lord. This is Pastor Mark. Welcome you to another lesson in 2 Peter. And today we'll be looking at 2 Peter chapter 2, starting at verse 10. But before we do, Jeremiah 15, 16, Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. All right? Now, in verse 10, it's a continuation of the last part of verse 9. So let's read verse 9. And he says here, The Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. Okay? So God knows how to deliver the godly. He knows how to deliver Noah. He knew how to deliver Lot. He knows how to deliver you from the judgment of the un, of the unjust and God also knows how to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment okay and to continue that same thought in verse 10 but chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government presumptuous are they self-willed they are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. He says, but chiefly them that walk after the flesh. And this Greek word for walk here is poreo, and it means to continue on a journey. It means to walk on a road. And it speaks of how these people uh, purposely choose to live their lives. Okay, It's speaking of how they conduct their lives. I mean... Before we were saved, we did the same thing. We didn't care about God. We didn't know anything about God. We just lived our lives according to how we wanted to live. We, we wanted to do this sinful thing. We did it. If we wanted to do some other sinful thing, we did, we did it. We didn't care. We didn't believe in God. We didn't know if, if the Bible was true or not. Okay, And this is what these people are doing. These people are living their lives the same way. It says they are, verse 10, they walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness. So they don't have the Holy Spirit living in them to, for checks and balances to, to uh, convict them of sin. So these people choose to live their lives after fleshly lusts, after uncleanness. They have a passionate desire to do the things that are defiling. Okay? They're addicted to their sins. They're addicted to whatever sin is, is the weakness. Addicted to gambling, addicted, addicted to some other, addicted to hatred or, or murder, or addicted to, to stealing, whatever it is. They're addicted to these sins and they just go ahead and do them and they don't think anything of it because, well, they don't have the Holy Spirit in them to convict them or to, you know, and and you come along, you're a Christian, you tell them, and they mock you, right? So this is who he's talking about here in uh, verse 10. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness, and they despise government. Now, despise here, the Greek word means to look down on, to have a low opinion of, to reject. And governments here, the Greek word for governments means dominions or authority, or anyone in a position of power, okay? These people don't like authority. They don't like to be told what to do, all right? And it's not just governments. It can be any form of authority, the authority at home with your parents, the authority at school with teachers, the authority uh, on, the, on the ball field with your coach. They don't like authority. Now, they may, they may accept one form of authority, for example, parental authority, but they may reject teacher authority or principal authority or their boss's authority, okay? But they have this inner desire to not like authority. They want to rule their own lives, and maybe even they want to rule yours. So here's the funny thing. They don't like authority. They don't like anybody telling them what to do, ruling their own lives. But they end up being, they. the very thing that they hate is the very thing they become. 
They be they want to rule your lives. Usually that's what happens. People that are people that hate authority usually like to rule other people's lives in some way. And it turns right around. So and they ain't gonna like it if you despise their authority. So they don't mind despising someone else's authority, but they don't like it if you despise their authority. Last part of verse 10, presumptuous are they, self-willed. They're not afraid to speak evil of dignities. Now, dignities here, the Greek word is doxa, and it means the things that are praiseworthy, honorable, glorious, commanding respect and recognition. You know, the word of God commands a respect. Prayer commands respect. There's a reverence to it. The cross, the resurrection, uh, the things of God demand a respect, a reverence. And yet these people are so arrogant and proud that they're not afraid to speak against the things of God. They're not afraid to mock and, and speak against prayer or to mock the word of God. Oh, it's just a book written 2,000 years ago. Who cares? Right? Just like in, in chapter 3, we're going to see. Ah, uh, I don't care what the Bible says. Things have been going on the same way for the last 2,000 years. Nothing's changed, and they mock. And we're going to see that in the next chapter in a few more lessons. But these people are arrogant, and they despise authority. They, dis they reject governments, uh, any kind of authority over them. And it says here, that they're they're not afraid to speak evil of of dignities things that are holy they're not afraid to speak evil of of the things of god and this is why judgment's coming upon them and when it comes like i said last lesson it's going to be forever and ever and ever and ever now verse 11 whereas angels which are greater in power and might bring not railing accusation against them before the Lord. Verse, verse 11, it says, they bring not the angels, listen, the angels in heaven bring not railing accusation against them. Even the, as we're going to see in the next verse, even Michael, the archangel, didn't bring railing accusation against them, right? It says here, don't feel like you have to defend God, okay? Even the angels, listen, the angels which are greater in power and might bring not railing accusation against them before the Lord. Don't feel that you have to yell at these kinds of people, okay? Don't get mixed up in yelling at them. The angels, listen, the angels, they keep their mouths shut. And so should we. If the angels don't, don't speak against the unjust, then we shouldn't either. In Jude verse 9, Michael did not verbally accuse the devil, but he said, the Lord rebuked thee. The Lord rebuked thee. I'm not going to rebuke you. We're, very, we're tempted a lot to do the rebuking. Our sinful nature when we get angry, we want to do the rebuke. I'll show you. I'll yell at you louder than you yell at me. I'll get you. I'll show you who's right. Listen, don't be drawn in by your fleshly desire to yell at them because you want to straighten them out. I'll straighten you out. I'll get you right. I'll get you on that straight and narrow. I'm just going to yell loud and use words and, 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 and raise my voice, you'll see. No, it, as, 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 as you well know, most times, most times, it never works. Yelling at people, the unjust, never works, okay? In fact, they even, maybe even make it worse. But please keep your mouth shut and let God deal with them. You present the gospel. If they mock, let it go. Let it go. 
God knows how to deal with people better than you do. Listen, God knows how to deliver the unjust. Listen, God knows how to deliver, how, how to deal with the unsaved, right? What about Paul before he was saved? What about Paul? Paul was, was, was taking Christians into, into prison, doing all kinds of terrible things. Before Paul got saved, what would we have thought of Paul, right? But God is not willing that any should perish. Any should perish. But if these people refuse salvation, God, then let God deal with them. Don't be quick-tempered against the unsaved, okay? You don't have to be quick-tempered and try to straighten them out with your words by yelling louder than them and, and, and grabbing them by the by the scruff of the neck or whatever. And, or, and you don't have to threaten them to, to have reverence for God. That's God's job, all right? You present the gospel in First Peter chapter three. First Peter chapter three, verse four says, "But let it be the hidden man of the heart, in that which is not in that which is not corruptible, even an or ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price." Meek and quiet spirit, and in God's sight having a meek and quiet spirit in the midst of unsaved, rebellious people is of great price. Proverbs 25, 11. You've all heard this verse. We're going to say it again. A word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in pictures of silver. Listen, your words can heal. Your words are tremendous. But don't use these words from your mouth to... to to be like the unsaved. I'll yell just like they are. I'll yell louder than them, right? It ain't going to work, okay? You present the gospel. You be a living example unto God. And if they mock, they mock. Pray for them because they may be a Paul. God may deal with them in their heart and they may get saved and come back to you and thank you one day. Who knows? We don't know, right? But let God deal with them with the unsaved. It's not our job to yell at anybody or, 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 or threaten anybody that's unsaved. You better reverence God. You better. I'll bang you over the head with this Bible, right? No. It's God's job to deal in the hearts of the unsaved. It's your job to be an example, to pray and, and be available to the unsaved, all right, to them. All right, until next lesson, Walk with the Lord. I know he walks with you.